actually you know, actually view my videos will use this. So hi, three people on the internet and my class. To do chi squared, we need for this one n s confidence interval alpha divided by two x two l x uh, chi squared left chi squared right a critical if I could spell left critical chi squared right top part because I like checking and doing stuff and then I can do lower and upper. Okay. Well, okay, I don't technically need the top part, but the formula, I do that because it's used in both formulas. So, uh, so, doo -doo 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 -doo. so this comes, these come from tables. Or, uh, but I use something else. So the top part of the equation is going to be degrees of freedom, or so it's actually n minus one, which is your degrees of freedom, times s, I don't want to do that. That's going to be n minus one times s squared. And the bottom part would be the square root of n minus one, Oh, sorry, not and that's one is part top part of a square root of top part divided by uh, uh, critical x to r, and this would be the square root of top or x to left. That's how you find all this stuff. So on an example where we have a 98% confidence interval, so we'll point 0.98 here, 0.98 here, and a sample size of 21, and an S of 0.24, we need to find all this nonsense. Well, these are one over. So, oh, sorry. Sorry, these are not these actually come from tables. This is calculated from uh oh sorry. So uh, these are from tables. These come from um one minus Alpha divided by two, and this would be alpha divided by two. That's where those come from. So alpha divided by two is going to be, and here equal to one minus my confidence interval. Yes, one minus b three minus b three divided by two which gives us that. So this is just that value there. And this will be one minus that value. Easy enough so far? Yeah. So these two here use different functions. It's just where it's kind of weird. So this, actually no, it's the same function, but it's kind of weird. So I use chi square dot in dot right and I use this one uses the left and it uses degrees of freedom so which is b1 minus one comma comma which would give us our critical value then the other one is the same thing I squared inv dot right of, then we do this, and then our 20, our b1 minus 1. 
make sure they're right. Okay, that's our critical chi-squared values. So, once, so, so far, the only thing I've had to put in are these. Where's my, where's my stuff? So the top part, so that's going to be equal to n minus one, so this minus one times this squared. The reason I do that again is because that's used in both of these functions. And it's easier just to have one function to, or one value to call, one cell to call, than everything else. So my lower confidence interval is equal to the square root of this value divided by, let me see, make sure I get the right one here. B8, so the bottom value. And this is equal to the square root of this divided by your left. And that should be your upper and lower confidence interval. So let me make sure that they're right here. Um, so 21, hey, wait, what? Oh, 20. Don't you hate it when you know the answer, you put the wrong one in and it tells you you're wrong? Okay. Left. Zero. I hate rounding the three decimal points too. There's a six, six. Yes. So my upper and lower, lower is point one. Eight, and then here, let's change to a different decimal place. At the very end. At least, the, uh, mm. that is correct. Verified by putting the answers in here, so it's 100% correct. Uh, yeah, it was 23, so the chi squared is 23, 24, it will all run the same basic chi squares. Basically. Yeah, because you, you know they run like three or four of the same problem types. So that's how you do it. And the only three you have to put in are your sample size, your S, and your confidence interval. And everything else will just literally pop in. Okay. Yeah. The other one, I figured out how to do, and it's kind of annoying. I figured out how to do it. Is the bootstrapping? I I got it. I got it. Uh, I think so. The one with the like two hundred sample size. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I got it. Believe it or not, not once I saw what they were doing, it's like, okay, that's not hard. It's just annoying, not hard. Okay, so let me see the data center. So we have this data, and they took bootstrapping samples because life is pain. Let me copy this to the clipboard. Open in Excel. No, that's okay. Hey, look, a lot of samples. So you have to find the mean of all these guys. The easiest way to do this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Watch. Can I still do this? Well, let me be a special. And I can't. No, okay. Gonna sound weird. I don't want them this way. I want them transposed. Oh, 
theory. Oh, are they special? I know short cut, really. You're gonna do this to me. Transpose it out here. Thank you. X. So there, there's a method to my madness, mostly because I don't like going down. And I'm going to do these. So I find it easier to work this way with this data. I can even do the fourth one. Because what it lets me do is <laughs> so sample. Go over here. And this is kind of important because it's going to save you a little hassle. So we want to find the average of everything. So the B2 to P2 should be. Yep, B2 to P2. And then I find them all. So the first thing it's going to want you to do is to, oh no, I just want the bootstrapping interval. So this is going to sound very weird. What you need to do, highlight everything, go to data, and so hit sort and say my column has data headers and sort by the mean and i want smallest to largest what this does is it sorts by smallest number to largest number so from here we have to find five percent on the bottom and five percent on the top which is, or 2.5% on the bottom, 2.5% on top. So 200 times 0 0.025 oh, is five. So one, two, three, four, five. But since we have an even number, and you guys remember well, so well, all the way back to the beginning of the semester, we actually have to find between those two, right? And then we do the same thing. It's 195th. So one, two, three, four, five, x. So what we have to do, uh, average these two equals average those two. And that's our bottom, that's our 5%. So here it'd be 3.63 and go down here and do it again. Which should be about 4.14. Maybe four. Yeah, 4.14. Why is it giving me different answers? This work was boring. Six three. What? It should be correct. For some reason, I'm getting answers that are slightly different. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know why. It's saying my correct answer is 3.67 and 4.12. And it makes no sense unless it's supposed to be. No, I don't know if that makes no sense. Oh, this is 
So this is for 95%. You have to make sure you watch up for your confidence interval. That's why I'm getting this wrong. 90% would be 10. So one, uh, get 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. So between these two. So it's 3.67 and down below. Four point one two, and generally speaking, these are going to be narrower than your T interval. That's the whole point of bootstrapping, is to narrow your interval. So without even doing the math on the other one, if you bootstrap and it's any decent sample size, that number's going to shrink. To my main error, what I did wrong with this one is I had. A 95% confidence of in 95% confidence interval, and they wanted a 90. Let me guess. Everyone who was working on that did not do that at all. And you would never have thought of doing that, right? Yeah. You would have done the normal one with standard deviations, and yeah, no. That's I did the same thing, and it ended up being very, very wrong. Uh, that is right. That's right on here. I uh, could, if I really was motivated enough, which I'm not right now, uh, get up a, uh, another program and verify it, but that would take work and effort, and I don't really feel up for it right now. So those are the two ones. Those are actually the last two main topics on here. What? Those are literally the ones that we have questions on. The only thing, I mean, those were the, the annoying weird ones, right? And yeah, I, it took 40, 50 minutes of me like, the heck do they want to, uh, and yelling and screaming at it and while well, I drink hot chocolate. <laughs> so that's done. Cool. Going to remind you once again, hey, you got a project coming up. Yeah, I know your homework's due soon, but you have a project coming due in one, two, Remember, I, I have my timelines are slightly different than MildCloud. So if you could finish it by the 23rd, I'd be okay with it. Because that's right before class. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and, and let you uh, get it to them because I figure you should, you should have to the end, of, right before class. I think they assume that you're gonna have a Monday class and you don't when they build it. But I don't have, it yells at me whenever I try to change dates. So, so yeah, do that. Hey, online people, do that. What, you're going to start doing part two next week? Yeah, my, well, my plan is I'll just do one part every, every week. Every week so. and make sure you get it right. And then yeah. probably bug me about the actual text and what your interpretation is. Yeah. Yeah. Us plenty of time to spare. 23rd. Before the 24th, so before class that, that week, so like mm, um, the, before the last week of class essentially, because the 31st apparently, they, apparently the 31st is our last day of class. In person. Two weeks, two weeks in a day. The 16th. Uh, yeah, okay, so the f I don't know why they did it, but the, fir the 31st, the first is the first day of transitioning to online, and then the last two weeks, so 7th, 9th, 14th, and 16th are online, and then after that, it's your optional spring break. Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, so what else do we have? The last question I just wanted to have was how do you know when you're supposed to use like the Z distribution and the distribution? So Z distribution, that's a weird one. That's always a weird one. 
I'm going to make sure, because what I end up doing if I don't understand that. Um, so a, Population versus sample. If you're doing a Z, you have a population standard deviation. Um, a T distribution, you have a sample. So that's the main difference. I, think I know there was a very simple one, and and I did. I hate to say it, I did Google it. It actually came off a of jump, but even then, you had to actually answer it. Why is Google going off? Oh, because I said I Googled it. Stop spying on me off overtly. Yeah, it will. It will. Um, oh, no. Actually, if you look at it, the, the main difference is if you look at a Z table, pull one up, is this guy, right? Remember this thing? Where you have, let me actually pull one up. Uh, is this huge thing? Where you have your, oh, this, is, this is a Z table. So you have your Z score and your percentage based off of it. A T table, on the other hand, is based off of. Degrees of freedom. So it's depending on your sample size. So even reading the tables is completely different and it gives you different values. And then this will give you your critical value based on your sample. And the bigger your sample, the smaller your t value is. Because I mean, 636, kind of a massive number. Um, so generally 0.05 for one tail or 0.5 for two, so you end up knowing some of, not on these, but especially on these, I don't care. Especially on these guys, you know a lot of these values. <laughs> well, you joke. Uh, that happened. Yeah. Um, it was my, one of my, my ex professor he passed on, uh, was doing a test on a GMO tobacco plant that was resistant to a pathogen. So you had growth on it. One of them was perfectly fine. The other one was dead. You can achieve 636 with that. Like you joke, but <laughs> I present that a population of two, one is alive and one is dead. I mean, you don't really need statistical tests at that point, you just show pictures of it. Guess which one is the, was the one that's resistant? <laughs> it's the best results, right? It's dead, it's not. So yeah. That's the thing is about statistics. Sometimes, yeah, it's nice to have the big fancy numbers and sometimes you show a picture. Which one do you want? The dead one or the not dead one? <laughs> Depends on what you actually wanted out of the whole outcome, but that's beside the point. So, what else do we do? Was there any other questions either from Zoom land or from YouTube? And I mean, like we've done two or three questions each time. It's just I've literally had them queued up, so I don't have any of those random sides. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Oh, those are the ones I just did. Yeah, the chi squared ones. Those aren't even the real ones. That's the thing. These are just with like population variances and stuff like that. But you're not even running real tests with people or anything like that because you do different things. But I think that's the next unit, next topic. So, but 
like I said, you should probably, so your next homework is actually due at the same time as your project. So I would prob I would highly suggest planning more time on your project than your homework because your project is worth significantly more than your homework. Um, uh, so for this upcoming week, uh, because of the way my schedule has flipped, if you want to bug me, uh, Friday at 7.45, not Monday at 7.45, because my online class got flipped around because of a quiz today. So if you need me, uh, Friday at 7.45 would be the best time to get a hold of me. In the morning, I will be very giddy that day, so. That's all you have, all you have. Online people, do you have anything? Or is that, I mean, I pretty much, I think I've covered everything for that whole unit over the whole, or the homework topic for the whole two or three weeks, two weeks or so. You guys have anything or no? I mean, speak now or forever hold your peace and I'll end the meeting. I am probably going to.